Okay. Now the reason that is, this is if you look at the um, the sun here, and then if we look at the Earth on a particular day, this red thing would be Mars, and that would be position one. But then as um, the Earth is in position two, um, uh, Mars is in position two, and then three. So actually, when they're kind of crossing paths, um, that's the case. Now if Mars is you know way over here. Um, it's going to just kind of go around in a circle, an ellipse actually. But um, so that's what makes it go further back because you see the Earth is rotating faster than is Mars. And so the Earth catches up with Mars and that's what causes the retrograde motion. So the early astronomers knew about this motion of the planets and it caused all kinds of issues. All right, next topic would be the moon. So everybody pause, put the moon. What are we going to learn about the moon? Well. The moon revolves around the Earth, and when it revolves, it has different um, phases. And you're probably familiar with the phases of the moon. Um, and so we have another slide to show. In fact, this is the, probably the best slide I would copy down. When you have a new moon, the sun, by the way, in this diagram is always down here, or you know, kind of right here. So if the sun is right down here, I'm going to make the sun black. I know that's a weird color for the sun. If the sun is here, you get the new moon. And the new moon means you don't have a moon. You can't see the moon because the Earth is in the white. And then you get a crescent moon when the, the sun's rays are hitting here and it just catches a corner of it, right? And you get this crescent moon, that's kind of a cool one. And then the first quarter when the moon is just to the left, if you will, of the earth as, as our picture is, the waxing gibbous moon is when you get, mo it's kind of over here. And a full moon, have I done this wrong? Hold on, nah, I'm good. Now the sun, the sun might actually be up here. You know what? I, I've got the sun. The sun will always be on top here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I had it backwards. Okay. So this would be the full moon. So the sun is on top. And then we have the waning. That means coming, uh, going away, waning. And then we have the last quarter. And then we have another crescent. And then last week we get a new moon again. And notice again we get this pattern. It's kind of like a curvy deal. That's how it follow, follows the, what's called the ecliptic. So that's a good picture. All right, a couple more topics here before we're done. They also were able to observe the ancient astronomers things called eclipses. There is something called a solar eclipse. I should say eclipses. Um, and it's where the sun goes first and then the moon and then the earth. Now, what does it look like? Well, it looks like that. These are very rare, but they're very cool when they happen. In the middle of the day, it'll become dark. Okay, we also have lunar eclipses. In a lunar eclipse, you have the sun followed by the earth followed by the moon. And so the sun and the earth and the moon, so the moon or the earth is in the way of, this, of, the, of the moon. How do I say that? Yeah, the, the earth is in the way uh, of the moon seeing the sun. And so you get some really cool pictures. This is kind of a picture here. Here is the moon. Um, and then all of a sudden here comes the earth in its way. And as time goes on, time-lapse photography, it eventually turns this blood red that you can kind of see. And that's pretty cool. That's very cool, I think, actually. And this picture kind of shows us, um, oops, this picture here kind of shows us what, uh, what, what a, it's kind of a blood red color um, when the moon is in an eclipse, a, a lunar eclipse. So that does it. That's kind of what the ancient astronomers were able to determine by looking at the stars and the moons and the planets. And um, we're going to learn more next about classical astronomy.